Hi, welcome to your first online lecture. This one is on infancy. So about this online lecture format, one of the benefits is you can pause and take notes to yourself. A recommendation is that you print out the slide handout before watching. Um, and also for this lecture, you may want to print out the infancy timeline handout as well. I'll explain that when we get to that point. You will see a couple symbols here and there in some of the slides. This little um, blue eye is the internet symbol. There are optional web-based resources if you want to know more about something, want to see a demonstration of an effect that's discussed, then pause the video, go to the Angel folder and click on the link um, that you're interested in. It'll bring you to the web page for an activity or a demonstration. The movie camera icon um, is that you will need to watch a couple of YouTube videos um, that demonstrate a couple of the principles here and the links in the folder will bring you to those. There are two that are required in here and as if they're required then I will note that if they're optional I'll also note that in the audio. I'm not sure how many of you might be fans of The Onion, a humorous newspaper. This is a joke article about babies are stupid and um, starting off with this joke this is actually related to the theme of this lecture. Um, about whether or not infants are stupid. There are some jokes in here that um, this caption of this photo, despite their relatively large cranial capacities, babies such as this one are so unintelligent that they cannot distinguish colorful plastic squeak toys from food sources. Although we know that babies chew on things because they have really good um, senses in their mouth and that's their way of figuring it out. So that's the joke here, um, but it is the theme. A, another joke before we get started is Johnny Depp joke. Any excuse to put Johnny Depp in here, I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. So Johnny Depp once said that having an infant around is like having a drunk in the house. So he says once they hit one years old, it's sort of like running around with a miniature drunk, a tiny drunk. David Letterman asks him in what respect. Johnny Depp says, you always got to hold on to them. They bump into things. They laugh. They cry. They urinate. They vomit. And there's that joke. But more seriously, William James said that the baby assailed by the eyes, ears, nose, skin, and entrails at once feels it all as one big blooming buzzing confusion, which leads to our guiding questions for this lecture. Are infants stupid? Why did people think they were stupid before, and what are the many ways in which infants show abilities? You can see a little preview here that we're probably going to conclude that infants aren't stupid, but I, uh, that's the guiding theme here. Um, with, but really that what kind of abilities they do have. So why were infants perceptual abilities underestimated? Why did William James think that it was one big blooming buzzing confusion? Well the first reason was motor incompetence, that early tasks for infants to show what they could do relied on them actually reaching their hand out and grabbing something are searching for something physically that required motor skills that were lagging behind their understanding. Another idea is that early held notions, the tabula rasa, so this is the blank slate argument that um, babies are born a blank slate and that they need to basically be written on, they need to be told things, they need to get the knowledge, and when they're infants they haven't had a chance to get that knowledge. Um, the other piece is the way that their um, abilities emerge, it's not even, it doesn't look logical, and so um, babies were perceived as stupid, basically. So a hint here, here's the infancy timeline. You can print this out and along the way you can pause, you can do this going back through your reading. Um, this isn't required but it's a way to keep track of where, where are our abilities coming online and when are certain things happening. So this is a visual way that you can keep track of that if you choose to. So how do researchers even go about this? They need to know what infants are thinking. Infants can't tell you. You can't sit down with an infant and say, hey, what can you see? And they can't say, hey, you know, I think those black and white lines are really attractive to me. They also can't fill out questionnaires, obviously. So what do they do? How do researchers do this? A couple methods of studying infant perception. Um, back in the 60s, the preference method. So infants perceive certain things. They want to listen to certain things. They want to look at certain things. They will move towards something with their eyes um, or even sometimes with their bodies. So if they like it, we think that they'll look at it. So there are ways of looking at um, looking behavior, sucking rate, 
What is sucking rate? Well, clever researchers hook up pacifiers to machines that will change what infants see or hear or experience based on how fast they're sucking on the pacifier. So infants actually get to convey what they want to see by sucking on a pacifier. Pretty wild. These infant researchers really have to be creative. Uh, also heart rate, the physiological reaction to things. So as heart rate decreases, it shows interest. And so what do they tell us? So if infant's looking at something, they're sucking on a pacifier to see something, their heart, is, uh, heart rate is changing. One is perceptual discrimination. So discrimination in the sense of indicating that they can tell the difference between one stimulus and another, that they notice a difference. So we tend to use the word discrimination in negative ways about social groups and those kinds of things, but really at its core, discrimination means noticing differences. Perceptual preferences is what they want. So it, what they want to see if they have some sort of choice at what they look at, what they um, move to by changing the pacifier rate. So discrimination and preferences. Habituation is another method. So if a stimulus is presented repeatedly, the response will decrease. And really what happens is infants and other people who do anything through the habituation paradigm, they get bored. And dishabituation is as a different stimulus is presented and the baby notices the difference, they'll look longer and they'll no longer be bored. So here's a great place to pause and go to the link for the habituation video and you'll actually get to see an infant watching uh, a rattle and then having the stimulus eventually change and you'll see how bored that infant gets pretty quickly with the same rattle even when it's being shaken. So did you like the video? Interesting, watching the infant get bored. So this is how a lot of research is done. And here's a slide that shows looking time is on the vertical axis there on the left and habituation shows that the looking time goes down. You notice that the when the rattle kept being presented to the infant the infant looked away more often, was looking for something else to look at because that rattle was getting bored. It's like, already, I've seen the rattle. I know, you're rattling the rattle. And then when the, I believe it was keys, it looked like those were keys, were shown, you see the line going up where this habituation is pointed at that line that goes up where the dotted, where the dash line is right in the middle. The infant looked again and got interested in that new toy after getting bored with the rattle. If there's no difference noticed, so we can conclude that infant could notice the difference between the rattle and the keys. Um, if the infant didn't notice the difference, that all shaky toys in front of them were just one in their minds, they would have continued habituating with this lower line, as you see, continued habituation and gone down and their looking time would have gotten so low that they just would have just found something else to look at because they were so bored with the rattle. Now this slide shows, here's an example of figuring out whether infants can tell the difference of when there are four squares, two white and two black, and 16 squares of eight white ones and eight black ones in the lower right hand corner there on phase two. So if they're, if they have enough visual acuity to tell the difference between the two of them, then they should get really bored with the four square ones and then when that 16 square one that looks like a checkerboard shows up, they should start looking at it again and get interested. So early vision, so uh, very immature at birth. They have poor distance vision um, at birth. The acuity is about 1 30th of what the adult level is. And through those types of um, preference method habituation, that um, these uh, photos are representations of what uh, it looks like the baby can actually see at that time distance vision wise. If you're interested in hearing more of a practical presentation for parents, there's an infant vision video um, in about infant vision in the uh, folder that you can click on and watch.